All right, guys, welcome back to the No Limits podcast. We got a very special guest with us today. We got my friend Donna Corby in the house. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, bro. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, bro. How is it in the UK right now? You're in the UK, correct? Uh, I'm in Ireland, just next door to the UK. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 pretty good. The weather is getting better, um, which is mm-hmm. always great. And I'm just happy to uh, happy to be here with you, my friend. Yeah, of course, bro. So let's start it off with the introduction. Uh, for people that might not be familiar with you, can you give a little intro? Yeah, for sure. Uh, my name is Donna Corby. I'm a journalist from Ireland. Uh, I work for Mirror Fighting in the UK. That's a division of the Daily Mirror newspaper. Uh, so I work online for them covering boxing, MMA, any combat sports, really. And uh, I have been doing that for the last just over a year uh, prior to that. I was with MMA Island. I was with uh, the Irish Daily Mirror for a little bit, and uh, and did some other stuff on YouTube, doing soccer and all that. So uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of my story up to this point. And now I I talk about uh, boxing and MMA for the Daily Mirror. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you what what made you get into like journalism, interviewing, mm-hmm. mirror fighting, all of that, bro. So when I was like a kid, I wanted to be like a soccer player like a pro like football player Mm -hmm. and I realized very early that I was terrible at football (laughs) so I couldn't really be a pro or even play at a decent level when I was younger uh so I decided yeah you know but the lad interviewing afterwards like I could do that like anyone could do that you know (laughs) uh so I I started a little YouTube channel when I was like 12 or 13 maybe I was 11 I don't even remember where I just went around to local uh, League of Ireland soccer games, football games, we call it over here. We, we kind of call it football and soccer because there's Gaelic football as well, but <clears throat> went around yeah. to local, I'm just saying soccer because you're in America, to soccer mm-hmm. games and um, was interviewing all the players and built that a little bit so that I was able to cover, you know, games outside of Ireland. You know, I covered some Scotland, America, uh, all over the place. And then basically when I got to university, I went to – a place called the Technological University of Dublin, it used to be called DIT. Uh, and I studied journalism. I majored in journalism, minored in Irish, uh, Irish language. So uh, in my course, which was very small, very tight knit course, I met a guy called JP Kierans, uh, who was involved with the Irish Daily Mirror at the time. And uh, we were just hanging out. Um, we, were, we were friendly and he got some, uh, he got some opportunities for internships and a couple of my couple of lads in my course um, were given those up. Like we were told, like, yes, yeah, send in your CVs, help out. And so I ended up turning that internship into three years with the Irish Daily Mirror, uh, writing about all sports, and then went to America and uh, came back because it just didn't really work out over there because of COVID and everything and some visa yeah. issues. Uh, and then uh, was kind of doing other things for a little bit, working in marketing, all of that, and uh, then ended up eventually – uh, coming out to mirror fighting when the opportunity arose uh, last May. So I just celebrated my uh, year anniversary there on the 10th of May this year. So started wow. then and uh, and a lot's happened in that last year. So that's a very long answer to your first question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a great answer. Great answer. And uh, me personally, I got familiar with you um, as you covered mm-hmm. more boxing, MMA, as that's the yeah. realm I'm yes, very interested in and uh, recently, you've been covering a lot of YouTube boxing. And yeah, I'm I'm a big fan, and I want to ask, uh, what's your opinion on the current state of YouTube boxing? Well, I think it's such a fantastic um, medium. You know, I think it's so exciting. Uh, you're talking about like fights that are competitive, fights that are sanctioned by governing bodies, and all of that. Like we had a discussion at one point last year around the time of the uh, the Social Globes event, mm-hmm. where we were like should we be covering this stuff seriously because it's not, you know, quote unquote real boxing. Yeah. But I was basically arguing that it's, it's real boxing in all, in every sense of the word in, in that um, you're talking about uh, guys who are very, very, very low level fighters who went and did the medicals, went and did uh, you know, the sanctioning stuff, got themselves ready and went and competed. So if you were covering uh, a real, let's say a, a real fight, like let's say you're covering uh, Anthony Joshua and the first fight of the night, there's some local guy, you know, a young guy, 18 or 19, who's one and or two and and he's fighting a journeyman. And you notice at that point, whoa, people are really interested in this one and guy. 
hmm. you would cover that guy more because there's like a spike in traffic or whatever. So it's the same for these YouTubers. Like you're talking about fight cards where the first fight of the night or or yeah, the first fight of the night, let's look at the, the creator clash recently, right? You've got Matt Watson who has around a million subs yeah. versus dad who has around half a million. And it's like, like that would be a, a main event follower wise that would be a main event in <laughs> in most boxing worlds but it's the first fight of the night in this thing and so you know i i just uh i just kind of i've always had an interest in it because i was always a fan of the paul brothers beforehand mm-hmm. um like before they were in boxing and i was writing about other sports and all that and so when they got into it i was like oh that's perfect so yeah it didn't get a lot of respect early on but you know mm-hmm. i think it's uh i think it's super interesting and, and re- with regards to the state of youtube boxing i think uh it's flourishing right it seems yeah. as if there's more events than ever. Uh, KSI mm-hmm. is coming back. Jake's coming back. I'm hearing about other stuff happening as well. Obviously, we have the um, the TikToker event in London on July 16th. That that uh, it looks like it's going to happen. Yeah, the- I'm hearing mm-hmm. about stuff later in the year. There was a plan for something July 23rd in Dublin, but that's been moved to the end of the year because I think July 23rd is going to be UFC London and Anthony Joshua versus Alexander mm-hmm. Usyk. Yeah. So they wouldn't like no one would have showed up. Um, and, no, and I don't think anyone would have wanted to fight that night either. Like, I don't think they were going to get big name fighters to want to compete that night. So uh, they, they've they moved that basically to the end of the year, I think. But it will hopefully happen. And I heard about some big names being on that. And the KSI card is going to be amazing because I think from what I've heard, it's a return back to like KSI versus Logan 1, KSI versus Joe, where it's really? all YouTubers, it's all influencers. That's what I heard. I don't know. Like, I only know personally... In terms of like insider stuff, I only know of one fight that's definitely on the undercard. But that fight is, first off, one that nobody will guess in a million years. And secondly, it's two influencers. It's um oh two like two interesting influencers too, like people who you'd be like, Whoa, I wouldn't have expected to see either of those. There's one you would have expected to see at some point, but you wouldn't have expected to see one of them uh in the UK necessarily. And then there's another guy who's you know, a, a much bigger like uh, influencer as well. Who you'd have gone, whoa! I didn't even know this guy boxed. So uh, that's um, that's going to be interesting. So I think it's never been more vibrant than it is now. Everyone wants to compete. Uh, we just had a, a hugely successful uh, couple of events. The Creator Clash, Showstar, by the way, was a success by every metric. Like financially, they sold yeah. a lot of tickets. They sold a lot of pay per views. I think they sold more pay per views than the Creator Clash. Maybe in, in or around the same. And it was also um, ten dollars, right? It goes yeah, so it was cheap. cheap. So they didn't make as much money, and it, it wasn't yeah. for charity and all of that. But I mm-hmm. guess like it was, they had set a target and they hit that target, and they comfortably hit that target, and okay. everybody got paid. Everything was good, which obviously in the past has been an issue. So yeah, it's been a good start to the year, and it's going to get a lot bigger towards uh, like later on as as we move towards the Jake card, which I have no idea what's happening there. I think Jake is probably going to keep it professional. If I were to guess, I would Probably, say if yeah. Alex doesn't fight KSI, he might get himself a fight on there. But otherwise, he'll keep it to <laughs> professionals. And then obviously the basketball player and the WWE wrestler um, are going to fight, uh, I think. that's that's a, I, I know as much as anyone else does about that. But then the, Which yeah, the WWE KSI card is wrestler? Be, I don't know. That's just what the reports are saying was that they want really? to get a heavyweight WWE wrestler. That's literally what they said. They didn't say a name, but that's what they were oh. talking about was getting – it would be great if it was one of the um one of the guys from it'd be great if it was someone who's like recent and relevant and stuff but yeah. you know um that's what i heard like that's i heard that from the same reports that everyone else gets i don't like have any behind the scenes knowledge okay, on this card okay. but i think um yeah obviously i'd imagine ashton silva will be on the card uh amanda serrano won't because they're hoping to get her to fight katie in september ideally in a rematch um yeah but that's looking like it might be Holly Holm. So basically, to answer your question, I'm be- giving you long-winded, annoying <laughs> answers. But no, to answer no, your question, no. I'm very impressed with the uh, with the state of YouTube boxing. I think it's only going to get bigger throughout this year. Yeah, that's what we like to hear. And uh, <clears throat> speaking on the man, Jake Paul, you landed mm. an interview with him, which is crazy. And congrats on that. And uh, <laughs> Thank you. I-, I know you said the story on the Twitter spaces, but can you repeat mm-hmm. it here? How did that interview come into and come into play well you know jake and i have have had a good relationship for a while so uh i was at his debut his pro debut i wasn't at the the deji fight but i was at the uh the pro debut in miami uh while i lived in america and uh i covered that and 
I met him right after he beat Gib and we did a little something and he he told me that night that he knew who I was but I didn't really believe him I thought he was just being like you know uh yeah. polite or whatever um because I wasn't even like like now I like people some people kind of know who I am a little bit like in the boxing space and all that mm -hmm. at the time nobody knew who I was especially not in America so I didn't really believe him but anyway I was at that fight that did well uh, I didn't really do much with the Nate Robinson fight. I did a little bit. I interviewed his coach, BJ Flores, and we kind of stayed in touch then. And uh, then around the Askren fight, we did a couple of things over Zoom, which was good. Um, and it was basically, yeah, I got to mirror fighting. We did something over the phone in August around the Woodley fight. We did little bits on Zoom over uh, the, the second Woodley fight that was supposed to be the Fury fight. Um, but yeah, in February, I was at Bellator in Dublin. And I interviewed Conor McGregor and I asked him about uh, possibly fighting Jake. And he said, uh, he basically, usually he would discard the question and sort of go, yeah, like next question, whatever. Like he doesn't really want to answer it. But <clears throat> yeah. he said, you know, you never know and never say never, which was a different answer. And then he said something about Jake not really selling many pay-per-views, which was like a good, like a good line as a news reporter. You're like, that's a good like headline. Like <laughs> Conor McGregor makes fun of Jake or whatever. But uh, what, what I had just done, a week or two prior was uh we I'd been at the UFC in Houston and I literally only covered that event because I was in America on holiday and I thought I saw a cheap flight to Houston and I thought if I go and cover this uh for the the mirror I'll get a free ticket and I it, it's a cheap flight I get a free yeah. ticket I do a little bit of coverage it'll be <laughs> cool uh so you know I did a little bit of work but it really wasn't a work trip it was a holiday um and I and at the press conference, I said to uh, to Dana, I asked him about the Jake diss track, and that obviously got on Jake's radar, and he found out that I was the one who asked, and uh, so I got a DM the night of the Bellator show, which was a couple of weeks later, and I and it was basically from Jake, and it was like, it was it said you're the goat, but it was basically like a keep up the good work kind of thing, and he followed me, and wow, you know the relationship was like it, it obviously like that made it more like oh so he does know who I am then. Um, Oh, I had interviewed him in person a few weeks before that at the uh, the Peter Serrano London press conference, but that was really not um that was like a brief thing. You wouldn't recognize anyone or anything, but that uh that whole thing was was nuts. And then yeah, so I got an email from his publicist uh, when he was pushing the Taylor Serrano event, and it basically said, "Yeah, do you want to do a do you want to do something over Zoom?" And I had plans to go to New York anyway, so um I was like, "Yeah, of course." So we did a little Zoom thing, and then when I got to New York, we did we did a, a couple of things over there so we we did a little sit down in his dressing room after the the weigh-ins and all of that um so yeah the relationship with jake has always been really good his manager nikisa Badarian is yeah. um is one of these guys who like if i were a fighter i would want him to be in charge of my career like if i were like a big like if, if i weren't like like jake's obviously a fighter but he's also all this other stuff if mm -hmm. i were like a, a a fighter a regular fighter serrano or or ashton or even Alex, who's not really like managed by them, but has a deal in place with them, an advisory deal. Uh, I would want someone like that more than any other manager in in the space. Obviously, Audi Attar is a great manager. Tim Simpson, um, Graham Boylan is great, um, and a lot of other people as well. Uh, Brian Butler, but you know, I would personally, if I were like a really high level fighter, I'd be like, I want Audi Attar. I want most valuable promotions, you know, because he's a he's just he's so clued in on the business side, like. He's he turned Amanda Serrano from a big ish name in boxing circles to like a household name. Yeah. Uh, it, at least in America and in Ireland, at least. So, you know, she's infinitely more. Famous. And like, obviously, Jake did that, too. But I think, you know, Nikisa has his experience from working as a CFO in the UFC. So he's a, a really good person to have around. And obviously himself and Jake and Amanda and uh, her other uh, her trainer and and. Uh, brother-in-law and manager kind of uh, Jordan Maldonado as well put together a good plan there but if I were like a high 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 level fighter and someone were like you could pick any manager in the world to manage you I'd probably want Nikisa to be the guy and so that so th yeah so to answer your question I got it through kind of just knowing Jake's people for a while yeah fair enough and he doesn't follow many people and he followed you so that's that's a dumb it was, <laughs> bro it was it was crazy I was out with uh my buddy Gav Quinn, who was a, a reporter at the Irish Mirror at the time. Um, and uh, yeah, me and Quinny were out, you know, in, in a, a club, like trying to talk to some girls or something. And yeah. um, and I, I looked at my phone and because I was about to head out from the club and I was like, 
I looked at my phone and it was like, you got a DM from Jake Paul. I was like, Oh my God, that's so crazy. Uh, so, you know, it was, it was nuts, bro, but it was, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. He's a good guy. Jake, by the way, is actually a very good guy. Um, I'm not just saying that cause you know, we have like, good, like off camera, he's very clever. Obviously he's, he's yeah. made, you know, millions of dollars. He's, uh, he's actually a very, very nice guy. And, and you can kind of tell that through like the way he treats Amanda and stuff and the way that he, was willing to, to help that event so yeah uh nothing but good stuff to say about jake yeah hopefully he comes on no limits next <laughs> that would be hopefully. ideal bro you'll get it yeah bro no limits is doing great i love the uh the hasim raman interview that was really uh that was really good and and uh he's gonna be a great fighter one day i think he's gonna learn a lot from that last loss yeah and, uh, yeah. and he's gonna be a really good contact for you guys guys to have so yeah you guys are doing fantastic at the moment thank you thank you and uh so I wanted to talk to you about your controversial top 10 list recently <laughs> YouTube boxers. And uh, I, I'm one of those guys that doesn't agree with the list at all. For sure. <laughs> but I'll tell you which ones I don't agree with. I don't agree with, I think Alex Wasabi, you put like number Yeah, he's fifth. a little high up. I yeah, understand that being controversial. I, I love dad. He was on the podcast. I do mm-hmm. not agree with that one at all. Okay. <laughs> and uh, JMX. I think GMX yeah. I don't agree with because of his inactivity. Yeah, he hasn't fought in a while, and he didn't fight like the greatest people either. I think yeah. like, and the thing is, like I said, uh, I said if, like if you were allowed to count MMA, then Bruckner would probably be number one because he has the most fights and all of that. But I said I couldn't count MMA for Bruckner, but then I did count MMA for JMX. So it's a little bit like it's a little all over the place. I understand that, but yeah, JMX I understand being controversial. And then. Okay, so for dad, um, it's just mm-hmm. we have to see the level of opponent, right? He fought yeah, Matt sure. Watson, it and not uh, great. yeah, he he wasn't really the most technical while getting that knockout. He seemed like mm. he was just swinging his arms around. No, I I get that. Uh, the only thing is that first off, I thought he was the most impressive on the Creator Clash in terms of like, I you know there were I guess there were more impressive performances. Like, I thought Haley lost, and she probably looked like the best. Yeah. Um, but you know, obviously, Doctor Mike did well. The issue with Doctor Mike was that he was in a lose lose situation, where like um, there was a situ- there was a UFC fight very similar. Uh, there was a guy called Dean Barry, an Irish fighter who was in the UFC a few weeks ago, and mm-hmm. he had a fight with a guy called Mike Jackson. And the way that it was all set up, it was like even if Dean beat Mike, he had to do it spectacularly for anyone to res- like to respect the win. Really? And it's it was very similar with Dr. Mike, I felt, was that if, like, Dr. Mike, with all the things that were in his favor, he's naturally probably a cruiserweight. Maybe even if he didn't cut weight and if he didn't really train that hard, he could even, you know, tip the scales of bridge weight or heavyweight. But yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not a natural, like, he is a natural cruiserweight. I-dubs, naturally a super welterweight, maybe. Yep, yep. Could probably even fight as low as maybe super lightweight welterweight no maybe not super lightweight but he could fight at welterweight i'd imagine and he get, got himself up to cruiserweight for his debut had been training for less than a year because mm-hmm. he said that in in our interview afterwards where when he did the documentary with sam hyde in march 2021 he had never trained properly so that means that it was like around a year if you if you say that the second he came home from that he started training which it, i don't think happened then it would be like a year and a month whereas dr mike had been around boxing gyms for his whole life or a lot of his life a lot of his adult life and uh, obviously he doesn't have a great deal of time to be training like you know for fights but his fundamentals would have been a lot better and so it just it felt like with the nature of that matchup for dr mike to like really earn a like to to really emerge as like a big big star of youtube boxing he would have had to do something a little bit more spectacular than he did against ian and i thought but also ian did really really well like Ian yeah, did, did a lot better than we expected. And I think Ian well. would be a problem at welterweight or super welterweight. You know, I think I, I think if, if Alex because Alex isn't naturally a 175 light heavyweight either. I think I think Ian and Alex would be a good fight. Yep. Um that's what I've been seeing too. But really you know, because because Alex would naturally be a bit lower in weight, Ian wouldn't have to come up as much. And yeah, I think um that's why like because I wanted to put someone from each one of the promotions on. So you okay. had so you had Jake, who's like a professional. And and it's arguable that Jake shouldn't be on the list. Like it's arguable, arguable that he's not yeah. really on the list at all. But you know, I had KSI from all of his stuff. Mm-hmm. I had um from Social Gloves, we had Gibb and Austin McBroom. Yeah. From too. Social Knockout, we had Slim. 
from mm-hmm. Creator Clash, we had Dad, and from uh, Showstar, we had Wasabi. And it was tough to put someone from Showstar on because, like, nobody really performed that well that night. Like, I thought Temper... Like, Temper was all right, but once again, it's like... He's fought once. He went the distance. He didn't even... Like, he won a a UD, I think, but not convincingly enough that the judges didn't give it to him on the night. Like, I think he... Like, I think Temper also... To, I think to get on a list like that with just one fight, you need to do something spectacular. Okay. And I think 22 seconds of a knockout, anyone who's been around boxing knows, particularly with exhibition rules, with like big gloves on, first fight of the night on a new promotion, all of that stuff, it's very difficult to get a referee to step in within 20 seconds. And it was actually 21 seconds by the time the fight was over. So I, I just thought like you land a knockout like that over, by the way, someone 20 years younger than you. Like, he's 41, which means he's way past his athletic peak, even if he had, like, even if he had the more experience. Whereas Matt's, like, Matt's around 21, 22, something like that, I think. Um, Or maybe you might be 25 or whatever. But that's, like, the point at which it would be the easiest for you to get in good boxing shape. Whereas it would have been a lot harder for Dad to get to the point of being as good as he was. Um, So I just thought that all of that taken into consideration, he earned his spot on on the rankings there. and And... You know, also outside of the ring, not that this matters too much, but he really has capitalized a lot on it. And he's very, um, he's super engaging with people. And, you know, I think like all, all of this stuff just played a factor. So I defend the dad selection. <laughs> JMX is a tough one. Alex is a really tough one. Yeah. And to be he's honest, so I think high. I said this on the stream when I was doing it. I think I forgot the temper had fought. Yeah. <laughs> I think like, I think I was doing it all off memory. I didn't like put in like a huge like I didn't put in like as much research as I could have done, but you know, I think maybe Alex should have been lower and maybe he shouldn't have been in there at all. And maybe temper should have been in there. Yeah. Um, like maybe Alex should have been around lower. The I think one that's also proven controversial that you didn't even mention yet is Logan at number 10. Yeah. But, but Logan has also never won a fight <laughs> and he's had three chances now. Now I know. KSI that's why I didn't tough, mention it. <laughs> but he like, and the, the fact of the matter is he got like, if there were judges, he didn't win a round against Mayweather. Like, he obviously made it the eight rounds, but he's anyone at Mayweather's level who's Logan's weight, a cruiserweight or a light heavyweight, would have had him out of there in a couple of rounds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with that. So I think, like, he used his weight well, and he did very well because he's not that good. Like, you don't want to say he's not that good. He's incredibly good for someone who's been training for a few years. He's not that good by Floyd Mayweather's standard. Oh, like yeah. Floyd won't have fought anyone at Logan's level, uh, pound for pound, since probably his early career right after the Olympics. Um, like he would have fought like the guy he fought at the Olympics, who he beat, but who he didn't get the decision against, would have probably been better than Logan, skill for skill. So um, I just feel like if he hasn't, like he did go eight rounds with Mayweather though, so you can't not put him on the list. He's the biggest. He's one of the biggest names. Not that that matters too much. But you know you can't you can't do a YouTuber boxing list and not put Logan on. Yeah. But he's at the bottom of it because he hasn't won any fights yet, and he also doesn't seem to care that deeply about the fact that he hasn't won any fights yet because he doesn't like rush in. Like Jake did three fights last year. Logan's done three fights in his whole life. So, you know, I think or not last year. Jake did three fights in thirteen months. But yeah. You know, I think uh, if Logan wanted to be a really good boxer, he definitely could. But I don't think he cares that deeply about it. He cares about other stuff. Um. So that would be why he's so low on the list is because he hasn't won yet. And you can't put him above any. Like, you couldn't even put him above Alex, really, because Alex won. Like, Alex beat Deji. But, but we can make an argument. Like, I'm just pr- trying to play devil's mm-hmm. advocate that Logan I went understand. six rounds and, like, a, a, like an arguably bad decision with the number two guy on your yes. list. Yes, that's true. That is true. Yeah. And also one of the best boxers of all time. Like, that's, that's yeah, why exactly. he's on there at all. <laughs> like, and, and I do think he beat KSI both times oh really you do i think he beat ksi in both fights like i think but i do like i just think that a different referee probably would have given him a little warning maybe taken one point for the the punch like i I know that the rule says two points but you know i could definitely see a referee going all right you can't be doing that but it's their pro debut they're they're sub novice level boxers and they're the main say Yeah, and like I would say, if I were a referee, I would probably go, "Hey, you can't be doing that." I would give him KSI some time to recover. Two points for the first infraction is crazy. Is tough in a six rounder. That's really, really, really do- like that's a very 
difficult call to make. And you wonder how different the fight would be if KSI is down two points in that round. Does he come out and he go even more aggressive towards the end and try to stop Logan? And does Logan try to stop him because he got the knockdown? You know, you wonder. But I think I. I but either way, I think like. I wouldn't have taken the two points if I were the referee. I would have had it play out the exact same. Would have given him the time to recover all of that. Um, and I would have been sterner with KSI about like taking the time to recover. I would have been like, you can't just jump back in. Because like, yeah, yeah. JJ just jumped right in. After mm-hmm. the points got taken, I would, if I were the referee, I would have been like, take the few minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought, Logan, I thought Logan won the first fight. Um, it wasn't even that close, I thought. I thought he won four rounds probably and also jj punched him way after the bell oh yeah I remember that. Started. that could be a point deduction which would change everything um but that referee was lenient yeah that referee understood <laughs> it's white collar boxing it's sub novice i'm not taking a point off someone for something like that come on and the yeah. same with ian in his fight with dr mike end of the fight he's lost the fight anyway the referee was i guess the referee could have been like hey take a point off this fella because he threw way after the bell but um, but yeah, I think either way, the first fight I thought Logan won, and then the second fight, he probably lost or drew based on the scorecards with the two point deduction. But I thought you had twelve rounds of them two together, and it, I thought it was clear who the better boxer was, and it wasn't JJ. Um, but that being said, yeah, he probably should be higher on my list. Then I don't know. Maybe I'll rethink <laughs> it. I'll do another one after uh, after Jake and KSI fight. Yeah, in yeah. You have to. <laughs> And I think uh, I think there are people on the KSI card who may end up on the list if they if they impress as I expect them to, but we'll have to see because I don't even know if that fight that I know is confirmed yet. But yeah, it's a uh, it's super exciting and uh, yeah, I'm sorry to everyone who was offended by the list. I'd love for other people to make their own and and get in touch. Like I'd love for people to like I saw some people doing their own little rankings and I thought yeah, you know. I would have maybe put Alex down here. I, I wouldn't have put him on the list. But like, that's the worst one, isn't it? Alex is the worst. Alex the worst, is really got the most egregious offender. Yeah, because he probably should. Yeah, and at number five, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, number five. That was high. a bad one. I guess maybe I was thinking. Maybe in the back of my head, I might have been thinking if he's going to be fighting JJ, we yeah. want to at least give him a little, a little push in the right direction. No, no, I'm joking, of course. But no, he, uh, no, Alex did. But also, Alex did very well against Edgy, and he did very he well did. against Fuzzy, and he did very well in the. Qualifier tournament. Um, uh, against Fuzzy, did he? Yeah, like up until he like he got caught, which can happen at this sub novice level. Uh, obviously, it shouldn't with the headgear and the big gloves, but he like up until he got caught, he was completely dominating Fuzzy. Like it wasn't it, it, like he was destroying him. Yeah. And he had never really like boxed before, and Fuzzy was in the middle of camp. Um, and then yeah, I thought he did okay in the qualifier tournament for social gloves. Like he won a fight first, didn't he? But it was against Stromedy, like, once again. Stromedy's very good. Stromedy's a very, well, very good little boxer. Stromedy was good during the Showstar event, but back then, not at all. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't go through a training camp. No, of course. But, you know, I thought he did okay against Bryce. I thought, like, I think Stromedy's really... Maybe Stromedy should go on the list if he has nah, another nah, fight at the start of the year. <laughs> Stromedy's very good, actually. I like him a lot. He's, really, uh, really? He's got a lot. And do you know who I actually think might end up being really good if we ever get to see him box again? Is I think DK Money might be very good. Uh, DK money is quite good. I agree with that one. If they if they put him in against someone who won't headbutt him next time, that'd be nice. Yeah, bad. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you by any chance know who uh, KSI's next opponent is? Like, bro, I wish I did. I want it to be Alex. I think that's the one that makes really? the most sense. I think it, I don't. I, I want it to be Dylan Dennis. I don't understand the Dylan Dennis thing. Like, from what I heard. Ariel Helwani ran into him at the Taylor Serrano fight. I didn't yeah. see him there, but he was apparently there. And I like apparently he was way over whatever. Like he, he fights at one seventy in Bellator. Apparently Ariel said he was close to two thirty. That's obviously Ariel taking yeah, Mickey a little bit. But if he was close to two hundred, it'd be tough for him to get down for KSI. We also don't know how well he's doing after the surgery. He doesn't share that much footage. And KSI doesn't have the like the athletic panache that Jake does in the sense that like if you lose to KSI and you're a professional fighter, it's tough to come back from that. Really tough. Whereas I think if you lose to Jake, it's actually not like I think Tyron Woodley will be fine. 
even yeah, though he lost cool. really badly to Jake. I think he'll fight again soon enough, hopefully, and he'll he'll be all right. I think uh, if Ben Askren wanted to do some stuff, I think he could still do well in MMA, actually, if he if he chose to do that, but I don't think he does. Um, and, you know, obviously, Gibb has come back, and Gibb's not a real athlete anyway. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Gibb has come back. Deji has been able to come back multiple times, uh, even though he lost both of them, but he's been able to at least orchestrate a comeback that has people excited both yep. times. So, you know, like, I don't think losing to Jake, like, hurts you that much. But losing to JJ, if you're a real athlete like Dylan Dennis is supposed to be, it would be tough to go back to Bellator and be like, yeah, I want to, you know, command these big paydays and all this stuff. Because Dylan gets paid very well by Bellator. He gets paid, like, mm-hmm. very, very good money. Like, not, you know, by Jake's standards, it wouldn't be considered great. But by Bellator standards, it would be considered very good. So I think um, I can't imagine why he would want to do it unless he thinks he can beat JJ, which... <clears throat> I suppose he could. Uh, I. It, it's an interesting fight if you just from an athletic standpoint. Um, I think like the other one, yeah, I think Alex makes sense. Obviously, the one that that makes the most sense that we know definitely isn't happening is McBroom. Austin McBroom, like that. Yeah. That is the fight. You know what actually would be another good fight would be JJ and and Gib, but that would never happen because they're boys. Because um, they're because they're they're friends and. Yeah. Uh, similar management and all that stuff. It just, it'd be complicated to make happen. And I don't it's think they would, if there's other options, they wouldn't want to do it, but that would mm-hmm. be like athletically speaking, a very interesting fight. But the fight to make is, is McBroom, but he's not interested. And yeah, Dylan Dallas is a weird one, bro. Like, I just don't understand where that's come from. The reason. But, yeah, go ahead. No, no, sorry. Tell me, tell me. No, no. So the reason I think it makes sense for KSI is because it, because Dylan Dennis's return will be huge in America. Because he's literally like yeah. a troll, a clown, right? Every yeah. UFC fighter will be talking about it. All the MMA press will be talking about it. And then you got the UK. UK is super excited for KSI's return, right? So it's like mm-hmm. a collision of two worlds, which I think will make the fight huge. Compared to Alex Wasabi, who KSI is going to be carrying that promotion. Yeah, for sure. I think that once you get... People forget like how big KSI is. Like, yeah. he could fight a a broomstick, and it would sell out the O2, the AO That's Arena, true. most arenas around the UK. He would sell out if he fought anybody. And I think that Alex is someone who, like, once the event is sussed and the media are attracted by JJ, mm-hmm. Alex is someone who they'll like. Alex is someone who will get a little bit of a push from people. So, like, you're right in the sense that, like. He's not as big a name as Dylan, but Dylan's also not a huge name either. Like you don't walk down the street and run into people who know who Dylan Dennis is all the time necessarily. Like he's, he's big in the MMA circles. And I do agree with you that he would attract a lot of like MMA interest. So yeah. you would have that kind of MMA versus boxing thing, but yeah, I guess, I, yeah, I suppose you, maybe you convinced me that Dylan would be the right one. Yeah. I still personally, I want it to be Alex because I also like JJ when he fought Joe when he was a lot lighter. I also thought he moved That's a bit true. better. He was a bit smoother. And uh, I understand that he's training with some different coaches. He's obviously not with Vidal anymore. Um, and so I'd like to see how he does that, at, you know, that. But I think, um, yeah, like I would rather see him fight Alex. But I guess you've made a very strong case there for Dylan Danis. And if he's fit and if he's ready, then um, then it'd be great. They also, they need someone who they know will show up. And Dylan That's has true. pulled out of a couple That's of true. fights. He um, and he's also, he's famously like a troll. And Dylan <laughs> understands as well how bad it would be for him to lose to KSI. It's way worse than losing to Jake. Way worse. Which would be bad. Like, it wouldn't be good to lose to Jake either. But, it, like, Jake, there's, like, the argument that, like, he's a very, very, very good boxer. We really have seen no indication that KSI is a particularly good yeah. boxer up to this point. Um, which makes it interesting. But, yeah, I think Dylan's pulled out of two or three fights for Bellator now. So... I think um, two fights for Bellator. But I think, uh, yeah, they need someone who they know will show up. And for that, uh, I think Alex is more the answer. But let's see what they do. And I genuinely have no idea. I haven't asked anybody really. Um, I know better than to try to annoy any of these people uh, yep. at certain times. I also don't know Mam Taylor that well. I knew Liam very well. I know mm-hmm. Nikisa very well on Jake's side. I know... You know the people uh, behind Creator Crash, all of that stuff. I know, like different. People, I don't have the greatest connections in with with KSI's team right now, so I have to work on that. Um, but yeah, not sure. Hope it's Alex. But you've made a very good case for Dylan Dennis. 
Yep, and uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. I just got a few take more all questions. all the time you need, my friend. Come on. <laughs> I'm wondering, so outside of this um, journalism, boxing, mm-hmm. MMA, are you up to anything else? I'm interested in like the life of Donna Corby behind this. <laughs> my life? <laughs> uh, man, it's... That's the first time I've been on any one of these podcasts and someone has asked me about outside of that. <laughs> I'm super boring, bro. I'm super uh, uh I'm super like conservative, like uh not politically necessarily, but <laughs> uh like not necessarily politically, I don't know, but not uh I mean like socially very like conservative. Like I'm very uh I've got my little like my group of friends that are a small enough group and I'm not one of these people who's like, Oh, keep a close circle. I'm like, no, I just don't have that many friends. Um <laughs> I, you know, I just hang out with my friends and, and sort of chill or chill around Dublin. Sometimes I go out, sometimes we, like we like to go traveling, we like to go to concerts and stuff. But yeah, I really, uh, I'm very passionate about music. I play a oh, lot really? of music. Um, yeah, I just did a gig there recently, um, opening for my dad's band. Me and my friend Luke uh, have a little a little duo called Two Kings and we go, we, we play around Dublin sometimes. So that's like my biggest, like, I guess my friends, but also like, yeah, outside of like, journalism which by the way is my biggest passion like i'm very like i'm super like dedicated to journalism and i really do want to be like the best boxing or like combat sports reporter that Mm -hmm. there is you know um like that's like ultimately what i'm looking for and i think that like the youtuber stuff plays into that because it's like an untapped market so i like i cover ufc and and you know professional boxing as well but i also cover this like i cover everything so i'm really super passionate about journalism and particularly the area of journalism. I mean, I'm really passionate about Reach PLC, the company that I work for. That's the company that owns the Daily Mirror. So, you know, I'm like, I, I, and that's kind of how I am with anyone I'm working for. Like, I get super passionate about them. So, like, I really want to be like the best, like, combat sports reporter that there is, and uh, and you know, do with that what I can. But outside of that, I really, yeah, I'm big into music. Me and my buddy Luke, uh, the Two Kings, shouts to the Two Kings, bro. We uh. We play around Dublin, and uh, and that's my that's the big thing that I do. I, I hang out with my friends, go out, uh, try to meet girls, and and play music. Awesome, bro. That doesn't seem too boring to me. You're living in the <laughs> <laughs> No, it's pretty it, it, relative to some other people. I was out with some people over the weekend, and their lives were a whole lot more exciting than mine. But yeah, yeah I'm happy. I'm happy with my nice little uh, my little uh, conservative, you know, yeah, life, yeah, my family yeah. and friends and all that. I see that Prime in the back. Can we get an honest review on Prime? <laughs> Yeah, bro. Actually, do you want me to crack one open? No, actually, yeah, I yeah. want to. Uh, no, I don't want to crack one open because uh, those are the only ones. Those are the only prime bottles in Ireland, bro. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, man. I I brought them back from the states when I was over there. I went looking around for all the different flavors. It was tough, bro. I like. It was tough. The 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 as you can see, I have a green box. The lemon and lime one you could not really get. I had to order it to my to the the apartment I was staying in. Oh, uh, but I I was going around to different GNCs and vitamin shops trying to pick up like okay, I've got the I've got the grape and I've got the blue raspberry and okay. And now I see orange and now I see the red one. So it took a while, but I got them all together. And, and then right as I completed my collection, the day that the lemon and lime arrived yeah, and I had all five of the flavors in one place, they announced the ice lemon ice pop. or the ice pop. And oh. I was like, Oh, for Christ's sake, like I, I don't have the full collection anymore, but um, <laughs> honest review. The best one is orange, orange. So I'll, I'll do the, I'll do my top five, and this will be just as controversial as the uh, oh. as the YouTube boxes ones, I think. So grape is number five. Okay. Grape is bad, and oh, the really? reason why that one is there is I bought two bottles. I couldn't even finish the first bottle. Ooh, and uh, it, it, it's it's not good. Mm-hmm. Then all the rest of them are are class. Tropical punch wouldn't be my flavor usually. I wouldn't drink it in any other type of thing, but it was lovely with prime. Um, okay. Then it's tough. Lemon and lime and blue raspberry are joint second, I think. It's like it's hard to put one below the other. Blue raspberry is it's the one I drank the most of while I was over in the States, so maybe it gets the edge, but they're really, really, really good. Um like they're like honestly, if we had Prime in Ireland, I'd probably never drink like a soft drink again, like a Diet Coke or like a you know, like sure. a, I know they're competing with Gatorade or whatever, but I would just always be drinking Prime. And then the orange is just go to the best, the best drink. Uh, it's better than Lucas Aid Sport. It's better than Gatorade. It's better than uh, whatever orangey drinks there are. It's the best. It's it, like it, it's it's actually unreal. Prime is actually class. Damn, I'm based in Toronto, so I haven't tried. Oh, it you yet. haven't got it yet? 
Yeah, but I want to. <laughs> oh man, you gotta you gotta sneak over the border, get some prime, and oh, sneak yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So Donna, last question. I want you mm-hmm. to give some advice to people such as myself, future interviewers, yes. journalists. Mm-hmm. Give us some advice on how to make it, such as yourself. Well, I don't know about making it. I'm <laughs> I'm very much a beginner as well. I'm a little bit past the beginner stage, but I'm very much a novice level. Um, yeah, but I think. Um, I think that the biggest thing is, and this is like a cliche BS thing, but what what we were told very early on when I was in in university was um, it's not who, it's not what you know, it's who you know, you know, like if you went and looked at my course in, in, in TUD uh, and you went through the list of however many, there was like 40 or 50 students in our course. I wasn't the number one student. I probably wasn't the number two student. I probably was, somewhere in the middle maybe like the higher end of the middle maybe like I've, if there was 50 in the course i might have been 15 20 okay. uh, something like that but i i made a lot of connections i i networked a lot networking is the absolute king like for example getting in touch like like you did with myself or you know joining on these on these twitter spaces or instagram lives or whatever and getting to know people being in contact with people that's the key because like I wasn't in the best journalism course I did uh, in Ireland. When you're going to university, when you're finishing college, you do the leaving cert, which is like the big exam, the big state test. Yeah. And you get graded based on your leaving cert points out of, at the time it was out of 600. So you do seven subjects, your best six, they pick and they take your percentage that you got and add them all together. And you know, there's different things, but I wasn't even close to the points needed for my first choice for university, which was DCU which is like the best journalism course in Ireland. Um, but I, and I wasn't close for my second choice. I, I ended up filling out my uh, college application. With the CAO is what it's called in Ireland. And my eighth choice, the bottom choice that I made was DIT at mm-hmm. the time, now TUD. And I, I got my bottom choice. I got my choice number eight, uh, journalism with Irish. I wanted journalism on its own, but I didn't get enough points even for that. I had to do, <laughs> I had to major and minor. Um, so, but what I did, but the thing is, if I went to DCU, I would have probably got to the same point a little bit later and I would have met different people and things might've gone a little differently, but in DIT, I met JP and it's like, you can't quantify how you're going to run into someone who has this kind of connection. Yeah. You know, like I can't tell you definitely do the DIT journalism course or definitely do the DCU journalism course or you know, in Toronto, I don't know what the best bet is in Toronto or whatever, but I think um, the key is talking to people constantly, you know, remaining in contact. And also, like like what you're doing, Prab, is it's so important. Just make content. Just do things. Just go out. Like, if you think you want to, like, the first thing we were told when we sat down and reporting the News 101 with uh, our, our lecture was Ian Kilroy. <laughs> a former um, Irish Times journalist and a, and a really great lecturer and a really, really great journalist in his day. Ian Kilroy was his name. And he, uh, he, he goes, who here wants to be a journalist? And obviously everyone's hand goes up. Maybe one or two people were only doing it because they also did their eighth choice, I guess. Um, but pretty much every hand in the room goes up. And he says, okay, you're all journalists. Like, and that's like a very powerful thing. It's like you're, if you want to be a journalist, you are you just have to go and report on things and you have to go and make things happen and it's that simple so if you want to be a boxing journalist go and report on boxing just you know uh find like your local gyms or your local shows and go cover them you want to write about football just go down to the local soccer game and ask somebody hey how do i go about getting a press credential or how do i go about interviewing this person or wait around after the game when people are going out to the the team bus and say, Hey, do you mind if I organize an interview with you or whatever? So that's like, just like make the content is, is the key as well as constantly being networking and getting in touch with people. Um, That's how you, that's how you do it, bro. Like just, just make and stuff like that's like, I did that YouTube channel. It wasn't even any really that good, but I was just out and about and doing things. Um, And, you know, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's one of the more important, um, things that you can do so uh, yeah my two pieces of advice are 
network, really like meet people, connect with people, and then uh, just do it. Like what you're doing right now, you're doing a you want to be you want to be in boxing and MMA, right? So you're doing a podcast about boxing and MMA, and getting people on mm -hmm. with whom you in whom you have a general a genuine interest. So yeah. that's like you're doing what my advice would be, which is kind of I understand that's not great because I would <laughs> I'm sure you would rather get advice that you don't already do, but uh, yeah, no that that's my big one, and yeah, just keep. Keep staying in touch with people, and and obviously, look, it's going to be tough to to get Jake on your podcast, but it's not yeah. tough to get Hasim Rahman or Anthony Pretty Boy Taylor or myself or you know people who you know like are Jake adjacent. Um, and if like if you're if you think that like you re like the fighter you want to be covering is Jake Paul, you know, like then yeah, like there's people in that sphere that you can talk to, you know, um, Milton Lacroix. I'm sure wouldn't be a difficult get. I'm picking out random people here, but you know. What I'm saying is like yeah. it's definitely just do it. Just do the thing that you want to be doing, and then yeah, keep in keep in contact, keep networking because you never know when you're going to talk to someone who says like you could if you're out at some event in Toronto covering something, you never know when you could run into someone who you know you get friendly with, and they say oh yeah I work at a a radio station and we have a couple of shifts over the weekend. Do you want to do that? Like that that yeah. it's and it and it works that simply. Like someone needs, and because journalism is so breakneck of a pace, like it's so quick, it it happens where someone's like, "Yeah, we need someone to cover three shifts this weekend. Can you do it?" And that three shifts can turn into, like in my case, it was like, "Hey, do you want to come in for a, a week and do an internship?" And that turned into three years with a big national newspaper, <laughs> you know. So, um, so you know, it, it, like that's how it works, bro. So, like, genuinely, it's super cliched, but just yeah, just it's not what you know, it's who you know, but also. You want to be good too. Like you don't want to, you know, just skate through by the fact that you knew people. Because that's the other thing is like obviously like, like for example, like JP, the guy who helped me, like he's doing really well right now. He just got a job in New York in the Sun, and um, you know, like he obviously had connections in the industry before, but he wouldn't have done anything in the industry if he wasn't really talented. So like he obviously worked super hard as well. So obviously working hard is important, but. That kind of goes without saying. Like, um, I think, uh, yeah, like that's so, like working hard is obviously what you need to do in anything you're passionate about. But yeah, just find what it is you're passionate about and uh, and cover it well and and talk to people. And you know, if anyone wants to do journalism seriously, they should always DM me. I'm always open. And and uh, yeah, it's it that's that's basically another long winded answer for you. Uh, for, oh, for okay, sure, a okay. question you wanted a shorter answer to. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Donna, for coming on. This was great. I love talking to you. Of course, we're going to keep in touch. Thank you so much for, sure. for coming on, brother. Thank you, man. All Anytime right. you need anything, send me a DM. I got you. 100%. Peace. Peace out.